welcome back to my channel. I'm Neha Parashar, working in a healthcare company and based in Germany. In today's video, we are on fourth part of step three during IND preparation. And today I'm going to give you tips for conducting successful USFTA meeting. In the first part of this video, we talked about 10 tips before conducting USFTA meetings. If you have not watched that video till now, then the link for all the past video have been given in the description box below. In today's video, we'll discuss about 14 such interesting tips with you. 10 tips that we should follow during the actual date of meeting and 4 tips that we should follow after the meeting. Now let's start with today's topic. What to do during the actual date of meeting? At the day of meeting with FDA, first and very important thing is reach before time. There are security check which happens before we enter the USFTA meeting room, right? Therefore, it's very important that we reach well before time to avoid any panic and awkward situation. Then the second point is lead the meeting and control the agenda. This is our meeting, right? And we should lead it with confidence. So we should know how to control the agenda. We know what is our goal from this meeting and for each question, how much time we should stress and where to stop. So this is very important that we lead the agenda effectively. Then the third important point is stick to the agenda. As a human, we always have this tendency to know more and more and ask more questions. But during the meeting with USFDA, we need to be careful that we stick to the script that we have practiced and we do not include any off agenda items. The reason is that FDA will not entertain any surprises and last minute questions. So we need to be careful with that. Then the fourth point is don't say yes to everything. The FDA does not do monologue, right? They expect that we bring a thoughtful and a scientifically justified facts on the table. They do not expect from us that we agree with their opinion in every case. If we have a strong scientifically driven point or justification, just speak out your view. FDA is very open for such kind of open discussion. At the same time, we should just respect the reviewer's point of view while bringing our point on the discussion. This way, we can do a healthy discussion with FDA and they acknowledge the facts. Then the fifth point is manage your consultants. Sometimes we hire external consultant to help us during these FDA meetings, right? And it's very important that they are well aligned with our script and agenda points. I've seen the cases where consultants were lacking a complete overview on the product due to which some misinterpretation happened and which led to the awkward situations. So it's very important that our consultants are on the same page. Then the sixth point is be honest with the agency and don't lie. We should not assume that FDA will always be right. FDA rely on the data and if they know only the half information or facts about our product, they can only advise us based on this partial information which we provided to them. The purpose of the meeting is to get useful, complete and clear cut information, right? The more honest we are with our data and information, the more honest feedback we'll get from FDA. There is no benefit of hiding concerns or information from FDA, right? So it's better that we share with them and we do not lie. Then the seventh point is always be polite and don't overcome it. We should be careful that we do not make any commitments that we cannot fulfill. If we are not sure about something, discuss that point in a follow-up meetings and don't just rush to make FDA happy with over commitments. That's a very bigger mistake that people make. Then the eighth point is watch out the clock during the meeting. It's very obvious that sometimes we may be so deeply engaged in a particular discussion with FDA that we end up running out of time. If we are not able to cover all the questions in given timeline, FDA will mostly not allow these meetings to continue over time. Right? Just be careful that we do not spend too much time on just one thing. One way to ensure the timing is that we assign someone as a moderator who is watching the clock and navigating the discussions as per the timing. Then the ninth point is recap the feedback. If we are not sure that we understood the FDA clearly during the meeting, it's always better to ask FDA for clarification to make sure that our understanding is correct. Remember, partial information is more dangerous than no information, right? So never assume. Moderator should just recap the discussion with the key points, agreement and action item to make sure that we understood the FDA's feedback clearly and we are on same page. Then the last point is make sure that all your questions are answered prior to leaving. Sometimes this point looks so obvious, but yes, very important. Check that all your questions are answered and thank FDA for their guidance and advice. 
So these were the 10 tips during the actual meeting day. Now let's see the last part of this video, things to do after the meeting is over. So what to do once the meeting is over? As soon as the meeting is over, perform a debrief meeting with your team and create the internal meeting minutes from your side. Then the second point is review the official meeting minutes carefully. Once the FDA send you the official meeting minutes within 30 days following to your meeting, then review them thoroughly. And in case there are any errors or discrepancy, then clarify them with FDA. Then the third point is work on your action items. Follow up on any commitments, requests and action items. Make a team kickstart the discussions internally with the team and assign the responsible person who will be working on these action items. And just to not lose much time. Then the fourth point is circulate the outcome of FDA meeting with your key stakeholders. This is very important for transparency. Once you circulate the meeting outcome with your key stakeholders, for example, people from R&D, from QA, from QC and so on, whoever is relevant, so that they are fully aware about the outcome, FDA's expectation and the action item that they need to perform. So these were the points which we should keep in mind to conduct a successful FDA meeting. I hope that you liked the video and if these videos are helpful for you then do subscribe the channel so that you'll get to know about the next upcoming videos. Now before we end this video, do you know there is one form which is always required for all INDs. Do you know which form is that? If you know the answer then let me know in the comment section. We'll discuss about these forms and content of IND in my next videos. Till then let's stay tuned for the upcoming videos.